So today I'm going to talk to you about um, how I think you should uh, go about choosing a ram for uh, breeding to your flock. And the way we do it here, um, before I even bring you out to see the rams or on our way like I'm doing right now, I will be asking you questions um, about your flock, the type of sheep you have, the size of them. Um, and then I'll ask you also for your breeding goals. Um, and when I'm talking about breeding goals, I am wondering if you're breeding the sheep so that you can uh, bring them to the shows so that you have kind of a show style flock. Are you wanting to produce fast-growing meaty lambs? Um, do you need registered stock? Or are you a commercial breeder um, and don't need papers? And uh, the reason I'm asking these questions and uh, wanting to know about your flock and the type of sheep you have and the size of them is so that if you need help, and want help selecting a ram from our our boys here um, I can kind of uh, point you in the right direction because um, when a ram leaves here I want it to be successful for the people who buy it um, and I want the ram to improve their flock so but not every ram is a match for every flock for instance, um, right here I've got Suffolk rams. If you want to do accelerated lambing, out of season breeding, and you want to use a Suffolk ram, I would say for sure you're going to uh, have a little more problems because they are not really out of season breeders. So uh, if uh, you want to go that route, I would more recommend one of our Dorset Rams or Dorset Crosses. But if you um, want to have fast growing lambs, this is the breed to go to. They're much faster growers. So this is our January uh, Ram Pen. When I say January, they were born in January. So this this group of rams is a little bit older and they will have no problem breeding oh 30 ewes they could do more but they are still lambs so i would i would max them at 30. um most of the the ones in this at a year old they're almost fully grown the, they'll be their full height about now They'll still thicken out in the following year, but this size is the size you're going to basically be getting. So you can see this guy here, he's a um, Dorset Texel Cross, so he's um, a little bit smaller than the Suffolk, and he's more suited for a smaller breed of sheep. We do believe in pushing... Uh, uh, flocks to improve them by getting uh, a slightly larger ram than your use. That way, um, yeah, your your lambs are always going to be on the upside. If you use a smaller ram than your use, then your lambs are probably going to end up being a little bit on the smaller side. So um, it depends on what your goals are. So, um, well, let, let me just say first that uh, when you buy a ram, you should know what you are looking for in a ram. Like, um, be ris realistic about your youth flock. And um, if you're really happy with the performance and appearance of your youth flock, then just picking an overall sound ram good confirmation and good good form and everything that will do you but if your flock is weak in a certain area 
Say he's weak on um, uh, the rear end. He doesn't have a meaty rear end. You might focus more on a ram like this, who is a little bit wider on the hip than the ram beside him. And I don't know if that's obvious to everybody, but the one on the right is taller and just a little more narrow. The one on the left is shorter, but he's wider. So are you looking to add height? Maybe then you'd go for the taller one. Are you looking to add width? Both this guy came in and he is also a really wide ram, but this one's wide and tall. So all of these guys we do select for confirmation so you shouldn't have to look at the legs but uh, look at them um, when they stand at the feeder here like this it is quite easy to see uh, legs and how well they're formed and it also lets you compare them side by side hey buddy we we really select heavily for long loin sheep so I think Looking at our sheep, you will find that uh, we're above average on length of loin. And length of loin is extremely important uh, for a ram and for your use. Um, because, for one thing, that's where a lot of the money is in the meat market. Um, the longer the loin, the more uh, cuts you're going to get out of it. Um, also... On the ewe side, if you're keeping replacement ewe lambs um, out of your ram, the long-bodied ewes are uh, much better at lambing and having non-assisted births because they have more stretch and room for the lambs to develop and then, then set themselves up in the proper birthing position to come out easily. Whereas if they're shorter uh, in length, the lambs can curl up and get tangled a bit more, and that's where you'll find more birthing problems. This guy here, he's by the post. From the top of his shoulder to where his elbow is, you can see it's called depth. And uh, when you're looking side on at a sheep, let me see your side. You can see that he's um, really wide. Some sheep, especially Suffolk, I find, tend to get a little what we call tuby. They're lacking that, that width on the, uh, the side of the body. He just won't sit still for me. Um, but that is something you should look for. Try to get the deepest ram you can find. Like this guy here, I can see that he's lacking uh, the depth that this guy here has. And this guy, you can see he's very wide too. So, so, and he's long. So you're gonna get your leg of lamb, you're gonna get your loin um, chops, and um, with that depth, you're gonna get um, the bulk and that capa high capacity we talk about where um, because they have a deep body cavity like that, they're able to eat more and eating more means that they grow faster. So you're going to get your faster growing lambs, which um, most everybody wants that. Um, and also, if again on the replacement you side, she, uh, lambs that you lambs that have that uh, depth like that have more room to produce those good lambs. So. Um, I would say, and a straight back too. So um, a straight back means that when you're looking at the shoulder, when they're standing there, it's not sagging. Or conversely, it can. Um, some sheep will even have an arch in their back. You, at this age, you can see that weakness more often if it's there because uh, these guys are almost a year old, almost at their full um, size 
so they're just going to fill out now. Whereas with a lamb, he might look great at uh, four months old, five months old, but add five months like these guys in, some lambs will actually fall apart. They'll, uh, as they grow muscle and bone, they, their backs will begin to sag because they just don't have the correct muscling to hold them up. And once you start getting dipping, um, then you're going into the poor conformation and that will pass on to your sheep. Um, it will, I mean, they can still breed and they can still produce good offspring, but the longevity of that sheep is probably going to be a lot less. Um, the, the ram, because he, rams will develop much more muscle in the second year. If he's got a weak back, he's going to have a much harder time holding that extra weight up. And he's going to have um, all kinds of associated health issues with that. And same with any ewes that he, um, you keep from that ram. If they get dippy, um, what happens is year after year, as they lamb and carrying that weight of the lambs, if she doesn't have a good strong back, um, she also is going to, start her belly's going to start hit, hitting the floor lambs will have hard time nursing at that point she will be uncomfortable so um you really want to look for soundness in your sheep and at this age 10 months old these guys are um they're pretty well set and on their way as long as you keep feeding them at this age because a ram should be kept in good condition because he is growing muscle and bone and sure, you're not using him all the time like you use, but he's he's got to have that power and strength um, to keep his body in good shape to hold up to all that massive size. So um, I keep going back to this ram because uh, I think this ram is a good example of an all round like if I was going to buy a ram, this is what I'd be looking for. He's got strong legs when he stands. He naturally stands widely spaced, whereas you can see actually that little uh, white guy next to him, he wants to lean in a little bit more. Um, that suffolk is too on his legs, but that's he's just a little squished. He doesn't normally stand like that. But you want, when a sheep stops, you want them to be nicely spaced and, and, and their legs well placed like that. And he's got extremely good testicles meaning um, they fill up that, that cavity between his legs quite well. They're um, not overly large, dangling past um, his knees, which some can do, and that also is not a good thing because they can actually step on them. They can get frostbite and stuff. Um, he's got good attachment on the testicles, so um, meaning that... The tendons and stuff are, you can see it's quite wide where the they're attached to his body. Um, it's not dangling and loose. You want that good attachment. You want them to be round. You want to be, them to be even. So it's for optimal sperm production and functioning. So he's got that. He's extremely wide, as you can see compared to the sheep next to him. The other sheep are all good, but that this guy is standing out for me. Um, if we go around to the side of him. Hey, buddy. He's standing in a dip, but he does have a very straight back, straight legs, and don't forget to look at the front end of a sheep. A lot of people are so focused on the back, but the front you want to see too. And he has daylight between his front legs as well. You want to see that. That goes in with having a powerful chest, powerful heart, and the whole capacity thing. So that, those are basically all the traits you're looking for in a ram, period. Doesn't matter what breed. Um, this ram here is also a nice ram, above average, good testicles, good stance, good medium sized ram wide, and the one beside him too. Um, 
I think most of these are really good, but I'd say those three um, I'm picking are the best three in here. So if you're look, if you're, these guys are all suffix. So when you have a breed, a specific breed you're looking for, and you're not just looking for a cross, then you've got to start looking at other things. Once you've found, say, your top three that you want to choose from, now you're going to, if you're looking at registered stock or are concerned about having registered or sheep that um, follow um, the breed um, the breed standard, you're going to have to look for different things. And on a Suffolk, back to this guy again, that black head, you want uh, that line of wool to be there to be an obvious start and stop where the hair on the black head finishes and the white wool starts. He's got that. You're going to want to look at the ears, which should be long. And when you pull them down, they should basically, the tips of his ears should touch the tip of his uh, mouth. They also should have a little flick on them. You see how his are curved up at the tips? That's called a nice suffolk head. Now, you want him to be black. He's right in sunlight right now, and it's make him, making him look a little brown, but he, he's he got a, a very, very nice face. Now, for the Suffolk legs, same thing. You want the black legs, and then it to come to a stop, and the white wool will start. As for the wool on the body, you want there to be no black fibers in it. Um, but, so all of these things don't matter for producing good lambs, but they do matter if you want your flock to be to standard or if you want to take them to a show. Even in a show, some judges won't um, penalize them for things like that, but uh, they truly should because um, at a show it's about confirmation and appearance. So um, a judge at a show should know the breed standards of the sheep they're judging. Hey, buddy. Oh, and disposition. Friendly, uh, good, ma well-mannered rams are important to us anyway. This guy here, also, I like this guy a lot. Really good testicles, well-formed. I'm actually really happy with this group. Um try find someone that I don't like as much and, and and we do go through them like once a month because they are lambs and they do change who look good uh, like I said a few months ago may not look so good right now and if I was to say okay there's a ram in this group that I don't like well I mean I'm really nitpicking because they're not that bad but to me, this guy's testicles are just a little smaller than, say, like, these guys over here. That could be a fault. See? Uh, not He doesn't have quite the width that these boys have. If I was going to nitpick, I'd nitpick in on that. These guys. Even the little white guy there, really good size on him. Um, I do, I'm just winging this conversation, um, so if you have questions or comments, um, be sure to ask me and stuff and I'll, I'll try to address them, but it is the basic thing, length, width, stance, um, you want to have all that regardless of your breed. And it has to be a ram that matches your flock. So if you have a smaller, like, Rito flock and they're smaller framed, you don't want to be picking the biggest guy like this out of our pen because you're going to say that suffolks have bad birth, create bad birthing in your sheep, which isn't the case. You've just chosen a ram that is too large for your use. 
So get a more reasonably sized ram. Still make them bigger than you're used. Push it a little bit because you always want to push it. But um, don't be unfair to the U by sticking her with a big guy. And likewise, if you have really big Suffolk U's and you're maxed out on the size, you don't want to get any taller. At that point, I would not be pushing the envelope by getting a ram slightly bigger. I might even take a smaller ram um, and a thicker ram because when they get too tall, they do tend to lose their thickness. So I might end up taking a ram like this guy who's just a little bit bigger than the dorset. But he's got the thickness and uh, and depth that uh, would probably be a really nice match for a really large ewe because uh, he would add that thickness to the lambs and she would add the height you need and it would st stop you from going overboard and creating those pony sheep. So yeah, if you want to in increase the size, add a slightly larger ram. If you want to decrease or maintain your size, you might go for a same size or smaller ram than your ewes. If you want to go out of season, you really should stick with an out of season breed, um, unless you're going to use uh, the, the breed like the Suffolk on the ewes that are breeding in season, and then it's perfectly fine. Um, for fast growth, definitely a Suffolk. Um, they do produce extremely fast growing lambs. And always, 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 right here, they're all, you can see, those are good legs, good um, wide rumps on all these boys. You want to see that. And, and actually, when you go to a person's flock to look at the sheep, you want to see that they have consistent sheep you want to go in and say god i don't know who to pick they're all nice that that's a compliment for the breeder and it shows that um, they know what they're selecting and um, by making the choice difficult for you it is kind of a no-brainer because you know that pretty well anyone you choose is going to do well for you and um you don't want to see sheep all over the board. Um, I guess that's about all I have to say. Um, I can, I'll jump over to the next pen where the rams are two months younger. These rams would do really well on commercial, a commercial flock. Um, sheep that you don't want to get to that Suffolk height. These guys have, again, um, extremely great depth and length and muscling on them and fantastic conformation and Suffolk traits of their markings and stuff like that. Um, a really, really nice group, but this is a different style. So um, if you want to go to the Royal, this is not the style it's gonna win. At the Royal, the tall sheep win. And people can deny that, but they do. It's the tall ones. These guys will never be tall. These guys are what I would consider a really medium Canadian style sheep. Um, they can breed just about anyone. So if you have the big, tall Suffolk ewes, these would be great for bringing them down and add, adding a little bit of muscle to them and stopping you from getting to that tall, stretchy, really hard keeping sheep. These are easy keepers, um, as the shorter sheep generally are, meaning that uh, it doesn't take as much feed to keep them in good condition. Um, these uh, sheep would do well on any commercial ewe because they're not oversized, and if this is oversized for your ewes, probably you want to be improving things like um, uh, rear ends are the main thing that you flocks are generally weak on and, and length and uh, these guys will put both those traits back in they're a really meaty crew quite happy with this bunch
So, hope that's helped a little bit. It's, I know um, it, it's harder on video because the camera will distort the image a bit. So I'm trying to position myself in a way that it looks representative of how they appear. And because uh, you don't want to mislead people, but I'm thinking I got it at a good angle to show how they're built. Um, I would gladly breed with any of the sheep in here. We don't sell calls or ones that I wouldn't be proud of because like I say, the best thing for me is someone coming back for more. That's how our business runs here. Uh, repeat customers are critical for us. And the only reason they're gonna come back is if uh, they've had a good experience from our sheep. So, um, yes, we want you to tell us that you loved them. And uh, the only way to do that is to sell you the best that we have and support you if you need support. And I think uh, all breeders should do that. But you do have to be forewarned and uh, prepared because uh, I have seen uh, sheep people buy, rams people buy from reputable quote unquote breeders and to me they were call sheep like just just poor poor rams i wouldn't that's not good so you it is buyer beware do your research talk to the breeders look at the flock see what their priorities are what um, they're focusing on here we focus heavily on confirmation growth qualities and um, breed type. We try to keep them Canadian style so that they're not going too large, but we don't like them small either. So we consider ours to be a medium sized sheep, both the Dorsets and the Suffix. Um, and consistency is very important and health. I mean, if you go into a barn where everybody's coughing, where they don't look in good shape, they're shivering, their bones are showing, um, they're skittish, their eyes are watery, um, their ears are drooping. You can tell when you look at somebody's farm when things are not going as should be, limping, stuff like that. It should be like this. It should be quiet. Everyone's eating. Everyone has that bright spunky look to them. Anyway, hope it helps. Bye for now. This is our British style ram Hannibal. We managed to catch him in the breeding group here. Well, you can see again the good testicles, the good leg, leg placement, the wide hips. Long body. He'd be a shorter ram because he's British. But you want a ram also with a big masculine head. See how he's, his muzzle is square, like it's almost flat and square? You want that. Um, there, There's those ears with the little flick on the tip. Black head. Actually, this in the camera that looks a little brown, but, and you want the ears to come to the tip of his mouth. And you want that line where the hair comes and meets the wool in a line and you want his wool when you split it to be white and his wool is white it's hard to see in this good light there we go and you see he looks like a big heavy ram but he's been in a breeding group and rams in breeding groups will lose weight so from a distance he looks like a heavy ram but I can see close up you can feel his bone so all these rams after they're done breeding instead of saying um, they're finished they've done their job now they're we leave them uh, we we're gonna feed these guys a little better to get their condition back on um, because it's just not right to leave a sheep skinny 
and they've got to go through the winter and they've got wool but uh, they need the added uh, fat build up on here just a little bit they need to gain like 10 pounds so that uh, they'll these uh, rams are outside in the winter they have a lean to to get out of the wind and snow but they are basically outside so they do have to be in good condition to stay warm and healthy hey Hannibal you're so pretty you're so pretty what the British sheep are known for, the, the muscling, and he's got that. Um, they also have bigger bones, so you got to make sure, if you don't want to give a Suffolk a bad reputation, that you put them on a ewe who has good hips and can deliver lambs well, and a long body, because um, for people to say that these big bones and big heads are bad birthers, if you have a well-built ewe, she can deliver anything. Um, they wouldn't have this breed around for hundreds of years if uh, they weren't good uh, producing sheep. Anything else you want to say about Hannibal? The wider the, the, wider the head, the eyes, the heavier the lamb. Narrow, a narrow face is a narrow, is a narrow lamb. And what about a short head? No. The, the, longer, the, longer, the, the longer the face, the longer the body. The wider this is, the heavier the lamb, but people are going to frown on that because people say, if that head's wide, it's a bad lamber, but you're defeating the whole purpose. The wide head, wide body. You're never going to get a wide head from a narrow body. Never happens. If the head's narrow, the body's always going to be a little choky. So there's a price to pay if you're going to pick up lambs that are too frail on the head, on rams. So, and, and the length of the head determines the length of the body. The shorter the head becomes, the shorter the body becomes. And you can see that with the uh, Texel breed and, and the Charlais and the Ile de France I even find. Um, and not to criticize those breeds, and I know people like those breeds, but they are shorter uh, loined in general, and uh, they do have corresponding short heads, um, short wide he heads, so they've got the width, no doubt about it, and the meat, but the length is missing, and uh, what I mentioned before, um, with length, you're going to get extra loin, which you want, but it also um, makes for a much um, better you for lambing because uh, longer you can lamb easier See, I have a big hand and we're not we're even, not talking a small even, hand he wears a size 14 I can, ring I, I can't even get my hand in his loin I can't get in there I have to go like that to get in there his loin is bigger than my that's hand. how wide that but, but it's all but it's also long too well it's about that's about a foot two yeah, he's, he's three feet long for sure. And we kind of laugh at people because at the shows and stuff, um, it's kind of a show thing where the judge goes around and feels how long and and wide the sheep is. To be honest, when they're all walking together, as long as they're slick shorn, if they got lots of fake wool on, yeah, you got to feel them. Mind you, length is pretty hard to hide. Um, a long sheep is a long sheep, so kind of think that that's uh, a little bit of display uh, when people are feeling and stuff like that. Um, it's very evident when you look at a sheep if it's long and wide. You don't need to be squeezing and touching and stuff like that. Oh, oh he goes! And he's off! <laughs> Come on, Ben. Ben, be nice. Now we're in the next pen with Gladiator, who's always a lot easier to catch because he's a pet. And he's a different style of ram. He does have, all of our sheep have some British in them, but uh, compared to Hannibal, he's much finer boned. And yeah, Gladiator's massive. Like he is one of the longest rams I've ever seen. And a lot of times when you have a back that's so long, you will start to get the dipping on the back because that's a lot of uh, mass to hold up. But you can see he's got a, a fantastic top line. 
and his legs are great too. He's not falling apart at all. So he's done really well. But that's where you can tell where the British rams have really, really coarse bones. Um, and Gladiator's got some uh, of the finer bone genetics in them, like maybe American. But uh, so this is what we consider our Canadian. But again, he's got that flat muzzle. Good wide muzzle. Wide head, wide head. long head. Perfect ears, the nice fine delineation between the wool and the the hair on the head, because this is hair, and his coloring's correct. Um, he's also has been in a breeding group and is losing weight. Um, the bell ear. Yeah, we got the bell ear. You know what I don't like about the suffix? What? They're so not friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, buddy. Are you doing your job? He said a real good shoulder on him, good neck on him. Yeah. yeah the, only, the only thing I would change with him is I would, uh, I, uh, he's got a real good rump, but I would make it even wider. But. What is it? Good. Back end on them, and good uh, as when they we were talking about uh, the year old there about the height they're going to be. Glad's is two years old, so he's the thickness he's going to be. Like so and there. you can see as the rams get older, they get that. A, a good ram should have that big, powerful shoulder and neck too. A ram should look like a ram. He should. You should be able to go in a pen and uh, be able to pick the ram out from the ewes. Uh, the ewes should look more feminine like this. Finer heads, uh, finer necks, just uh, more more feminine and you want you want the ram to look like a tough guy. Whether he's a tough guy or not, you want him to look that way. Okay, now he just thinks you're a moron. Right, Glad? And you see his uh, long as Gladiator is, um, these U's, he's got some big U's in here, and we don't want these U's, this is the height we like, we don't want them any bigger, so um, Gladiator in this group, if you're trying to find the ram, he's not going to be towering over this group, he's a nice match for them, it's his uh, power and neck and manliness that make him stand out in this group. His height is a perfect match for keeping this group the size they are. Their lambs will all be this moderate size, which is what we aim for. And you see how, how this girl here, you can tell that this is a, a female. She has a much finer nose, but still square on the end. But um, you can see it's, it's much more delicate and the finer neck. It's still the long body, and you can also see she's pregnant. She, she doesn't have an udder yet, but you can see she's forming a belly. She's probably about 240 pounds. Yeah, our, our use average between 220 and 250 pounds. Okay. And Gladi Gladiator, we can't get him on the scale. He won't fit anymore. We'd need a cattle scale for him. He's too long. He's too wide. Um... But we have stuffed rams into the sheep scale before and managed to get three, three fifty on them. So I'm guessing gladiators um, oh. in that range. You're never going to hit me, will you? Hey. Gladiator doesn't hit. His tail's out, which remember means Our. that they're liking it. Our dog. And now you see, oh, it's an itch. he's got a bit of an itch. They love the attention. And you see, we're in a breeding group. Uh, handsome, the ram we bought in is in the other breeding group. And believe me, you don't walk in and do this with him. He's going to want to smack you. 
Where his gladiator is always well behaved, whether he's in a group or not. So is Geronimo, so is Snappy. General, you need to watch him a little bit and fell in a little bit. Out of the groups, they're fine, but... Uh, you know what's going to be hard with this ram? Is when we take him out of the breeding group, how are we going to catch him? <laughs> what's that? <laughs> oh, you're easy to catch, aren't you? There you go.